It's just a debate, and so I have to bring arguments because I said yes, and I do mean yes, that we do need drugs, and so I have to bring arguments, and my arguments are, number one, that generally in PVNET, all our treatment guidelines are based upon the risk for thrombosis. That means if the patient is low risk, based on age or the history of thrombosis, we give these patients phlebotomy or low-dose aspirin in the case of PV or just watch and uh, do individual aspirin decisions in ET patients. And if they are high risk patients, we give them aspirin plus hydroxyurea or as a second line interferon alpha. But when we look at the data very carefully that even with this, we cannot prevent thrombotic events and still under hydroxyurea and phlebotomy, we have an incidence of 20% thrombotic events. So the drugs are not really very effective in abolishing thrombotic events in all patients. Number two, that we know that regarding symptoms, we do not improve the symptoms actually. And there is a very nice prospective analysis of more than 1,300 patients, which has been published recently, showing us very clearly that treatment with hydroxyurea or phlebotomy is actually associated with a lot of disease burden symptoms in patients with PV, and we have similar data for ET. Third, we have a lot of side effects and adverse events with these standard treatments, hydroxyurea or interferon alpha or anagrolite in the case of ET. So it is not without adverse events. And number four, the term hydroxyurea resistance, again, is an issue where we know that there are certain factors which have a negative impact on the survival of these patients. Nevertheless, we know now today with huge data available, recent data, that it is still not really clear what the prognostic relevance of each individual factor on survival is. So we are using terms, we don't know really what they mean. And yeah, and that's all these arguments mean that we really need new drugs too, and that we do have an unmet medical need in a subset of patients with PV and ET. And then we discuss just what options could be offered to these patients, including the JAK inhibitors, ruxolitinib, but also other classes of drugs like um, edge duct inhibitors, epigenetic therapy, or even anti-fibrotic treatment with imitelstat.